the Daxon breaks in real time. You finished? Good boy, yes, okay. We may continue, Daddy. Good morning, everyone. It is the day after the Queen sadly passed away and it still feels incredibly strange and bizarre. It's, it's very strange. I, I, I don't think I've ever felt anything like it because obviously she's been there our whole lives. Well, my whole life anyway. And uh, it's just a very, very strange, bizarre feeling. So Ali and I got out this morning for a dog walk just to sort of blow off the cobwebs and it's definitely one of the first days that feels particularly autumnal which um i don't know i don't know whether that's rather symbolic at all i don't know but yes we're out on the dog walk misty morning fresh but not too fresh ready for the day well my hair has gotten crazier and crazier with the autumn dampness in the air but we basically spent the entire morning just chatting through what to expect um, from life now that the Queen is obviously no longer with us and just understanding what the protocol will be and those kinds of things. But it's very fascinating. It really is. And it's also very confusing because I think that, um, especially online, I think that people will probably expect creators or whatever to just know what to do and I think it's one of those things it's sort of like we've never lived this before let there's people let alone in a professional sense so it's yeah it's kind of waiting for a bit of a guide from the government to understand but yes yeah, so I'm gonna have a leisurely day at home I think we've obviously got the builders in um still end of week two which is exciting and uh, I'm gonna give you a big update because I can't believe how quickly they're working it's just looking so good I'm wearing my Dewberry field coat and a jumper from my Karen Millen collection. And then I've got some Adenola leggings on and some Holland Cooper wellies. But we're almost home now. We went a different route this morning and uh, lovely temperature and lovely weather. everyone my goodness me freshly washed hair second wash since I had it done um, and everything is getting a lot more kind of like goldy I feel like it always looks dark down there but when you lift the camera up a little bit goldy um, yes it's actually a few days after that dog walk that we did just the time got away from me and I thought well I'm gonna keep the dog walk in because it was so lovely and autumnal and we really do have autumnal weather now um, so yes, but it is a few days after that and I've actually, it's been obviously a few days since the Queen's death and we now have a King, which um, it almost feels like a fresh start. It doesn't, I mean, obviously it's a really, really sad time, um, but it also feels kind of like exciting for a new beginning. So yeah, I don't feel as weird as I did the other day, which is such a weird thing to feel that way about someone that you've never met. <laughs> I mean, I've met the king, um, but I've, I, I never met the queen. And so, yeah, it just, it's a very, you kind of have to process it, go through it, work it through in a way that sort of feels comfortable for you. So yeah, anyway, I'm up today. It is now Saturday and I have the house to myself because understandably my husband is off playing golf with um, Carrie's boyfriend. So they've got a, a game, a round of golf that they're going to get on with even in the autumnal weather. And I have a day at home, which actually is good for me because I was supposed to be seeing Carrie, but she's not very well. We were going to be going for like a pub lunch or something like that. But anyway, she's not well. So it's me on my own. But in, 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 it's actually given me a good, a good amount of time to get some bits done and also bring you up to speed on essentially because I would have put up the first week last week but it has actually been only a week, really, a week and a couple of days of the work outside. And honestly, I can't believe the, um, the speed at which they are working. And there's so much to show you now. And I think you, you'll kind of see a little bit more of the vision 
now, which is really exciting. We also got the final plans through for our outdoor kitchen. And when I tell you that I am so excited about it, this has been so painstakingly designed because I had a very, very particular vision in my mind of how I wanted this to look. Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm going to get the sink kitchen setup that I don't have in my kitchen. Because one of the things I've always wanted is to have one of those beautiful kitchen sinks that has windows that look over the garden um, right in front of it. So it's up against the wall and then you've got the windows, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I've, I've not got that. My kitchen sink faces the wall. And uh, so I wanted to build something that I didn't already have, if that makes sense. So I'm going to talk you through the designs. Um, it is, oh, honestly, I'm so excited for it to start. We still don't have patio tiles. We have narrowed it down to two. We're waiting to see if we can get the first one. Um, otherwise, we're just going to go with um, one that we were sent a sample of, well, that the Nicholson's team brought a sample of, which I really like as well. But there's, there's so much that has happened, and I am like, honestly, it's just been such a joy. And obviously, their team is always so lovely to have here, but it's just coming together so, so nicely. I went to see Dr. Ayad as well, and I had my usual tweakments, and I had my jaw Botox um, topped up because we went really light last time and I was like I really want to get like the full treatment this time so we really did um, go quite ham on my jaw Botox because genuinely I have no tension in my neck my shoulders anything anymore so it's been a real sort of quality of life improver for me personally obviously I'm not a medical professional don't take my advice on medical stuff I'm purely somebody that just shares their life on the internet so <laughs> it just so happens that I get to just tell you about these things but I'm definitely not advising you to go and get this you have to do your own research blah 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 blah, blah. this is my outfit by the way um, I'm wearing an Amazon shirt dress uh, that I've rolled the sleeves up on again it's kind of like a chambray uh, denim uh, but this one doesn't button all the way down I've got it in the sort of grey colour as well but I just feel very comfortable when I wear shirt dresses around the house because I feel like I look put together but I'm also super comfortable and I tell you that shopping on Amazon is quite possibly the gift that keeps on giving I, I genuinely mean it this dress is straight out of my dreams oh my goodness okay I'm, I'm really excited if you can't tell but basically I went on Amazon searching for jumper dresses. You'll remember, um, I think it was last year, I had the sort of shorter cable knit, but I really wanted to see if I could find something similar to my Johnson's of Elgin one, but something that I could wear every day that I didn't, you know, I'm so in love with that jumper dress that it's so nice that I'm worried I'm gonna sort of ruin it. So I wanted to get something that was a bit more suitable for everyday wear. And I saw this and it was 100% cashmere and it was like 130 pounds, which if I remember rightly, I used to get little, sort of roll neck jumpers from John Lewis that were around about, I think 60 or 80 pounds. So for how much fabric this is, this is down to almost my ankle, kind of like mid calf, for how much fabric this is and the quality of this cashmere, I actually cannot believe the price of this. So much so I went and ordered another in this color two in the sort of camel colour and two in their charcoal colour. I only bought one initially because I wanted to try it out and it does take a little bit of time to arrive and their sizing's a bit funny. I got it in a, a medium, which as you will see fits me really well. I just pop a, a cinched in belt, but it has this rib det detailing as well if you want to wear it looser. Um, but this is just so classic, so comfortable, so warm. I am over the moon. In fact, I'm, I've got a few pieces to show you because I genuinely cannot believe um, what I've managed to find. I think that's the thing. I just, I don't know what it is about shopping on there, but I just love finding different pieces. And I know that so many of you have like really appreciated um, me introducing this sort of Amazon feature in this way, because I'm able to, obviously I, I have a really sort of I like nice things, I like expensive things. Um, that doesn't mean I like to sort of just go for things because they're expensive. And finding a cashmere dress that I can wear every day, that is comfortable, that looks the way that this does, basically. Like this to me looks like it could be Laura Piana. And people always find that really funny when I say that as well. But um, for me, 
Fashion is about being smart, first of all, buying things that are gonna like last a long time, good quality fabrics, that kind of thing. But also it's about getting a good deal for me. Like I don't just want to throw away money for the sake of it. And if I can find something that's like this, that 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 is so much more like of a affordable price tag, obviously over a hundred pounds is still expensive, but this to me is a great basic. You're gonna wear it every year. I have honestly just put this on every morning this week because the temperature has dropped. The color is totally classic. I'm actually gonna just quickly slide on my Laura Piana coat because you're gonna see how seamlessly this jumper dress goes with something as expensive as that. Um, and just looks like it's supposed to be together. Okay, so this is the Amazon jumper dress on with my Laura Piana coat. Um, I actually hadn't taken this out of the bag, but this to me is autumn tones done perfectly. And this, this just looks so simplistically elegant and I feel so warm so soft <laughs> but you are going to see you're probably going to get sick of me wearing this jumper dress because in all honesty it is exactly what i want this is my idea of lounge wear um, a cashmere jumper dress like this i can wear during work hours in the daytime and then also snuggle up on the sofa and be comfortable and warm and cozy so i will link all of the colorways of this in the description box down below if it's still available because i think quite a few of you swiped up on my Instagram stories for this one, but oh my gosh. <laughs> Changing the genre somewhat, I went in search on Amazon of what I wanted was basically a really nice plain sort of square neck, maybe bandeau, uh, spaghetti strap swimsuit for when I go swimming and I wanted it in a colour that I loved. I've got like a purple bandeau one which you would have seen me wear before but I wanted a green one and I found this on Amazon and it fits so nicely and it just feels so perfect so for when I do like the sauna in the steam room at uh, Soho farmhouse I've got something that's comfortable to put on and looks really nice as well so I might get another one of these so I can have them on rotation but I just love the color super affordable and really beautiful quality. It did have um, like mold, not molded cups, but like sort of pads. I always take those out because I feel like they leave sort of marks around. So I took those out, but very, very happy with this. Slightly disjointed from the cashmere, but I'll take this on holiday with me. I'll use this a lot in autumn, winter when I'm obviously going to the, to the spa and things like that. So very, very happy to have found what is a very flattering swimsuit on Amazon. So I have another really lovely jumper dress with a lot of sort of detailing to it. it has this kind of seam down the front as well as its own built-in drawstring waist this is definitely a more casual option i would say and would look really really lovely with sort of knee-high brown suede boots or even over the knee it's got slight slits to the side and it's got more of a peachy pinky undertone so i've got a cardigan a cashmere cardigan that goes over the top the cardigan's not from amazon but it works really really well with it i'm really enjoying this kind of layering of knitwear in this way but again super comfortable very soft this has a real sort of elasticity to it so um, i'm not too sure on the fabric of this this one but this one would definitely um, be one of those pieces that can be layered under coats and knitwear and things like that and still look really lovely and the details within it um, just give it a different feel but the other one is more simplistic so you can accessorize a lot easier with it but my goodness I, I couldn't believe it when I was finding these pieces I thought they're gonna arrive and I'm not gonna and they're not gonna look anything like the pictures but these ones are so good <gasps> I thought I would show you it with the uh, pinky tones of the cardigan over the top, which really, really complement it nicely. Um, you can obviously still go for your warm accessories and things like that. And if you wanted to put a uh, belt over the top of the drawstring just to conceal it, maybe um, it would dress it up really nicely. But very happy. Now, I think you're going to have to walk with me on this one. So I'm pretty sure that this skirt is a cashmere and wool mix um and okay so let's go back <laughs> i have a friend and her mum is an incredibly well put together lady um she is literally like the lady of the manor she's just amazing and i remember being at their house once and my friend telling me that her mum doesn't own any like loungewear or anything like that she doesn't have tracksuit bottoms or anything like that she's always like wearing proper clothes kind of thing and i thought oh my god i could never do that 
And then I realized to myself, it's actually about finding clothes that look like you're still well put together, but are so comfortable that they feel like loungewear. And when I found this skirt, I was like, please, please, please say this is gonna be as comfortable as it looks. So this is similar to the, the jumper dress. This is a knitted skirt, midi length to like mid calf. Very Laura Piana, very Brunello Cuccinelli vibes, like simplistic, lightweight knitwear. And it's amazing. So I've popped it on with a Ralph Lauren shirt and another jumper that's in the same, same kind of butterscotch tone. But this is it. This is how you're comfortable at home whilst still looking put together. And I know that that life is not for everyone. And I know that some people will view my videos and think, oh my gosh, Lydia, why are you trying to be perfect all the time? I just really like feeling put together as much as possible. And it's something that I enjoy. It makes me feel good. It makes me productive. So why would I not do it? And I feel like I'm streamlining my wardrobe now so much to the fact that I'm able to be comfortable, look really nice and feel really lovely in myself as well, which you've got one life. And that for me is, is just kind of nailing it, if I'm being perfectly honest. And this is just so lovely. And you can obviously add in richer tones to warm things up. You could do a big scarf, a big coat, whatever. But this to me is just everything looks so nicely put together and so comfortable. I thought I'd just give you a quick view from further away as well, just so you can see it here, but it's got these gorgeous kangaroo pockets. I've ordered this in other colors as well. I think it comes in a chocolate and a black. I've ordered them because I will be, in all honesty, not wearing tracksuit bottoms now ever again, because even though I had lovely cashmere sets, this, this is my kind of tracksuit bottom, something that looks like this um, and I can still wear and be so comfortable. Honestly, I'm so happy. So happy. You wanted a more affordable Johnson's of Elgin dress. I feel like I kind of delivered this. So again, this is from Amazon. I went in search of a navy blue midi length uh, jumper dress. It's not exactly the same as my Johnson's of Elgin one, but it is similar. And um, although I was expecting it to be longer, I still really like the variation in length. Um, this is definitely a midi rather than kind of like a mid axi ankle length. Um, it's got really lovely stretch to it. It's also got pockets that are hidden in there. Um, it's more of a swing style, but you can cinch it in with a belt and it is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous, beautiful royal blue. Feel very Kate Middleton in this, which is never a bad thing and really, really good price point. Now this is more expensive, this one, which is really interesting because I'm not entirely certain on whether this is cashmere. It's very, very soft incredibly soft maybe it's got like a cashmere mix with some elastic in it or something some elastane um because it does have a nice sort of stretch to the material but it is still super soft so this one's a hundred pounds whereas the other one um is the one the first cashmere one is 130 so but i just thought this was a really great more affordable alternative because the johnson's of elgin one is obviously about 800 pounds and i wanted to find something that if you wanted to recreate the look obviously i don't have the cardigan sadly um but if i find one i'll obviously let you know. I think that cardigans are worth investing in if you can though. If your budget will stretch, maybe you can go for a cardigan and then pair it with something else. But for me, this jumper dress is gorgeous. But I just want you to notice how the season is changing and my accessories, they just aren't. Like I'll, I will probably introduce more of my black accessories, but for the most part, I just feel really happy using um, the accessories that just work time and time again, which is is it's sort of like you get to a point where you realize that um, you just want to wear what makes you feel nice and not what's like on trend. And so that's more of what I'm doing now. It doesn't bother me if someone thinks I wear maybe a belt too many times. It, in my opinion, that's exactly what I should be doing. I should be wearing it too much. Um, and it, it should be the one that you're always seeing because I just don't need any others. Basically, I feel really, really happy and content with my style at the moment. <laughs> And actually, I wondered whether I should do a bit of a style Q&A because obviously I've, I've um, grown up over the last 10 years on the internet and my style has changed so much. So when I first started, I was very edgy, a lot of like wet look leggings, black milk leggings. Then I obviously became a bit more of like a gym bunny and moved through that kind of phase. Then it was very much like the fashionista and that style of thing. And now I'm, I feel like I'm settling into a space and someone actually said to me, oh, I really miss your edgy style. And it's so funny because at 34 years old, I'm obviously chasing different dreams now, but also I've never felt 
never felt better and more comfortable and happier and more me than I do right now. Like, everything that I put on every morning makes me feel so happy and so me that I actually can't put into words that it, even if someone is watching me now and they're thinking, my goodness, I miss the old Lydia, hopefully just seeing someone happy is enough to make you think, but it doesn't matter because she's happy and she's comfortable. Because honestly, I just feel amazing. Also, blue and white is not just for summer. Oh my goodness, I've just popped on this Santini Couture coat with this royal blue jumper dress and obviously still warm accessories. Look at that. So regal. This coat is everything. I just wanted to show you it's styled up. And again, alongside Luxe accessories, these things just work so well. And obviously this is faux fur, it's not real, but it looks, it's just the most incredible quality. But yeah, look at that. Even with the bag and the shoes, how wonderful. Now this is a slightly different silhouette and it's so soft. Oh my goodness, this is the kind of stuff that you see all of the top like knitwear um, brands like look at this ribbing detail it's it's like almost like a bodycon maybe slightly more sort of pencil shape but it's not clinging to everything that I don't want it to cling to I've obviously always cinched it in with a with a belt but it just finishes just below the knee looks so perfect really great for work wear this as well um, and you could obviously add a blazer over the top to this if you wanted do you know what let's do it <laughs> like this is the most perfect work wear outfit warm comfortable but smart i popped it with a holland cooper nice bridge blazer my one is the one with the um horn buttons um i believe it might have changed on the website i've been getting quite a few messages from people asking where's the blazer did you change the buttons um but yeah i think it's now got gold buttons but my one has the horn buttons which i love eh voila just popped it on as i would wear it if i was going to an office look at that so incredibly smart. Let's show you from back here. I am literally, I can't cope. This is my best autumn winter haul. Um, I actually think it's my best autumn winter haul ever because of the price point, the quality, and the like, the, the look and feel of these items. I'm, I've never been so impressed in all my life with the quality of knitwear because I feel like knitwear can, it's very easy for it to not be good, but the, the softness, the comfort, the shapes, the silhouettes, the details, absolutely nailed. Can't believe it. I think you can tell for yourself, really. Like, look at that. <laughs> I'm literally in shock. <laughs> and the final piece that I have to actually try on is more of a chocolate cable knit. Again, with sort of elastic finishes. This feels very similar to the navy in the fabric composition, but still incredibly soft. Really, really nice high uh, roll neck and more of a sort of knee length, but slightly tapered, if you like that look. Um, just a sort of variation on a jumper dress, I guess, but you could also add much thicker belts to this. Um, again, really comfortable, just love it. <laughs> I can't keep repeating myself. I have also found, which I'm gonna link in the description box down below, I've ordered it, but it's not gonna have arrived in this video. I have found a black watch cashmere scarf for 55 pounds on Amazon as well. You can also get it in, um, I think just wool, which is cheaper, so I'll link both, because with black coats, you will love that, so I've ordered that. I'm just gonna give you the heads up, but you can wait until my one arrives if you want. I've also found an olive green scarf as well, which I think will add a really nice touch to um, autumn winter wardrobes as well, so I'll link them in the description box, but this is by far my best haul ever. Like, I am just, I'm so happy. But I'll link everything in the description box down below. Let me know if you enjoyed this and let me know if you pick anything up because, um, yeah, I just, I feel like you're really gonna like these ones. <laughs> I currently have Classic FM on the Sonos system because that is all I've listened to since we sadly lost the Queen. And it's really lovely. That Obviously they're playing quite sad songs, but it's just very comforting at this time of year. I've also just popped on my cardigan because I'm gonna take you outside. This is my Philo Sophie cardigan, and I believe that they are going to be redoing this for the coming season. So if you did want to get your hands on it, I will link it in the description box below if I can, if it's out yet. I'm not sure if they've launched their cashmere collection, but they let me know that it's coming back. 
Um, right, I'm gonna take you outside and show you the carnage, but also what's coming together. The one thing we are struggling with, it's like literally not getting dirty anywhere, you can probably see there, other than by the back door. Because obviously the dogs come in. Are you ready to go outside, my loves? My beautiful loves? Come on then, let's go and take a walk around the garden. As you can see, no more patio. No more patio. Off you go, boys, come on. So, we have one swimming pool for every pet at the moment. Actually, that's a lie. We have many swimming pools. We have dug up a huge portion of our terrace and this is already looking, I mean, it probably doesn't look it to you, but to me, this looks the dream. Like I can already see it coming together. We've reduced slightly the size of the flower beds because um, obviously we have all of our ox and wood furniture over there and we're gonna have the table either. We're either gonna do the table this way because obviously this is going to be a bit of a focal point now. Um, we don't want to have to walk around it. So we're going to see, we're going to play around with it when all of the flower beds are in. We still have one flower bed to be dug here and then another flower bed here. So this patio or this step here is just starting to be dug up. We're reducing the size of the steps because they just don't need to be this big. Um, we don't have hordes of people trying to use them. So this is going to become a flower bed this here is also becoming a flower bed, which is something that has just been braced ready. We are taking back these winged walls um, and we'll probably make them rather decorative or something like that. Obviously, there's going to be beautiful border planting in here and also I'm finally going to get whatever climbers we think to climb up the apex of this space because that's one thing I really really want in some of the guest bedrooms we have a uh, wisteria that climbs over and you get the view of the leaves in front of the glass and it just makes such a cozy but outdoor feel so yes lots of climbers up the house we also have some crab apple trees like I've told you before which are canopied crab apple trees I don't know the technical term oh you're having a little wee thank you <laughs> yes yeah, so there'll be a, a little canopied crab apple tree there and in each corner of every bed, which will provide a small amount of sort of um, dappled light, which will be really lovely in the space as well. So we probably won't need any parasols because we'll have natural parasols, which will be really, really lovely. Obviously border planting here, we're using as many plants as humanly possible. And you can start to see where the steps down to the lower patio. Oh my goodness me, is that okay, you done? Um, this is where the steps will begin. Um, we'll have winged walls here as well to create a bit more of a grand feeling. But you will step down this space. I don't know if I can do it. It's quite tall. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Let's not try that. Maybe I can step down there. This is probably not advised at all. No, I'm not going to do that. I'll take you around to show you. We have all new pier caps and copings coming in which are gonna match the stone underneath the sills that our house already has. I'm also thinking about painting the windows. Some of the uh, fascias and things like that need to be repainted. So I'm thinking about going a sort of slight sage green, like the same color as my greenhouse. I saw it on my neighbor's house. I need to ask her what color it is. We obviously have diggers and what have you. Of course, Porter was not barking for no reason. There was somebody at the door, but you can get a really good view of the carnage when I come away. Um, and you can see how we've sort of ripped everything up, but it's gonna come together very quickly. I think next week is gonna be a real sort of turning point. I always say that. All of our furniture is currently on the grass over here. <laughs> but if I take you around here, this is really where things have started to, got to get really lovely. So, I'm not gonna talk you through the outdoor kitchen until I can show you the um, actual plan, which we came through yesterday, but the outdoor kitchen is going to be situated here. So it will start here, then there will be our pizza oven, which will be built in brick. These will all be in, um, it will have a stone top with really beautiful cabinetry. It will continue there. And in the middle of that cabinetry there will be my stone sink, like a sort of stone Belfast sink like a trough kind of thing. So you'll look out into the woodland. And then on that side, we will have a big green egg and cooking bits and pieces. Not to talk you through it, but I'll show you it. Then obviously the steps will come down here. Say hello to our new pathways. 
Look at these new pathways. Oh my goodness, can you believe how quickly this has happened? So everywhere you can see this kind of pinky toned is going to be re-graveled, redone. So we're introducing a lot more gravel. This down here will all be wildflower. So it will come up nice and high, a little wildflower island. But I'm trying to think of some, maybe some bronze art or something just low, low level art to go in there. I don't want it to be too tall or anything because we already have the bird bath. This will all be wildflower with, I believe, some topiaries in this area and then maybe some topiaries. I'm not too certain. I have to refer to the plans. Um, we're also massively leveling out this. This is something you'll never really realise, but this slopes so much. You can kind of gauge how much we're bringing it up, I think, from there. This is all being feathered out so it's going to be a lot better but this is a new pathway we are losing this entire stretch of pathway here to nothing this will all be turf and feather out into the woodland and wildflower a little seating area here with some kitchen cooking herbs etc etc we're still waiting to finalize this we had a guy come out the other day and we're just kind of working with ideas and plans i mean in a dream world i would probably turn that area into almost like an outdoor conservatory with a lantern roof but um that's just too much too much money um so yes bringing you down here this is all going to be lit with little oak posts like at soho farmhouse um we've got this little island here that then obviously leads into this area so this is this feels so much more like our garden now it feels like it's part of it but the thing that's made the most massive difference so we've kind of there was this big chunk of wood and it was just finished so not well we're actually going to be feathering off the tarmac down so when you come out of here we're also adding another step but if you can see from here this is where the turf originally went so it's like that so very much you have to kind of walk around there and then go down the path there now this will all be gravel and you will just walk down very seamlessly straight into the kitchen garden so it's going to feel a lot more flowier we're also obviously having a sink put in the outdoor kitchen which means um i'll have a beautiful place to wash my vegetables outside which is going to be incredibly lovely and we're having some gates added there lots of stuff is happening but just seeing these particularly these pathways come to life has really changed things i'm not sure if i can give you a better view from up here of how it's looking this all of these little where you can see Barclay all of those areas will all be wildflower which is going to be very very nice oh gosh my hair is very very voluminous today but whilst I'm out here I thought I would give you a quick little kitchen garden update my goodness me where has that courgette come from that is now a marrow my goodness but I've got a an abundance of courgettes at the moment I think next year I'm just going to go back to growing normal courgettes either the, the Black Beauty or the original courgettes. I don't think I'll do any of these special shapes, um, but I will be using these probably as gourds for the Halloween month. We've got more over here, but that's definitely a lesson that I've learned. I'm just gonna stick to the normal courgettes. Got lots coming through on that plant there, although things are starting to look a little bit disheveled. Got lots of carrots still. I definitely overdid the carrots. I was in a mad carrot phase when I planted all of these, but look look at all of these coming in i've got so many asparagus i think next year we will have a real proper asparagus harvest because these have really bedded in super super well had lots coming through we have our gourds and pumpkins coming along well i really like this color i actually went and bought one this color last year so some nice sagey green pumpkins coming coming through and actually it's working really well here because they're just kind of taking over this particular bed, which is lovely. I'm going to be taking my herbs out of here. My bulbs from Sarah Raven have arrived, so I'm gonna plant two origer on either end and then a selection of bulbs in there. Same on the other side. And then in here, one thing I didn't show you, I need to get rid of my old thyme pots from uh, Hello Petal, but I've got a new little table set up in here. From Hello Petal as well. I've got some figs. Oh no, my only fig has fallen off. Oh, that is so sad. 
but we've got figs, lemons, a few little myrtles and an olive just to make up a beautiful tablescape. You can buy these fig trees from Hello Petal as well, so really lovely. Um, we have, why has my lemon trees lost so many leaves? That really concerns me, really does. What is wrong now? I think maybe they need some more water again and I'm gonna give them another spray with some uh, soapy water. This one has always been incredibly temperamental, but it's got lots of lemons on there, so I need to take care of it. The corn is doing very, very well, and it's very interesting. Lots of people told me that I hadn't planted enough corn, but it looks like they're doing really well. Nice kernels coming through. I still don't have a single ripe tomato, but I have hundreds literally hundreds they keep falling over as well i need to stake them a little bit better i think but i have literally hundreds of tomatoes and i'm kind of hoping that they're going to start ripening so i can use them for some chutneys before i run out of courgettes as you can see they're doing very well providing that they do ripen up soon i um, will definitely grow these next year but this is the other view so there will be a beautiful island of wildflower here hopefully a more sympathetic railing system here and this will be a sort of boulevard of wildflower that you walk through and it will be wonderful you go off this way and it will lead you to the main terrace and the cooking terrace but yeah so that's a little update <laughs> that's a little update on this side of the um the garden not too much has been done where the rose arch was but yes it is coming along nicely it's so funny Ali said to me he's like I think that when we're finished we are not going to want to move <laughs> and I was like no don't say that but in all honesty we will probably end up staying here a good few years and providing that we don't find a house I just think that the, the good thing is is us being happy here already means we have so much time and patience when looking for a house so it's really lovely we leave the boys outside um, but I also made oh I'll show you the, the, the outdoor kitchen sort of inspo just so that you can get a feel for things so this is going to give you a very very good idea so this is our light well where the spiral staircase is these are the steps that we're putting in. Here is the canopy planting um, of the crab apple trees. Um, these are some little chairs. Hopefully we'll have a few little oxenwood armchairs there. And then this is the outdoor kitchen. So it will be cabinetry, cabinetry, and then our brick built pizza oven. Then that is my little stone sink, which I'm gonna let them know that that's actually not how it will look. And then this will all be a beautiful, Caesar stone worktop which I found it's this beautiful grey almost like it kind of matches our oxenwood um, tabletop so it's going to still feel, still feel really lovely and rustic and then we've got a little big big green egg going in here because we've heard such great things about them um, but then these steps will all be lit there'll all be lighting in around here so it's going to be a very very sociable space now to show you oh actually so this is the cabinetry kind of design and i always think that um it's important for these things to look like they're supposed to be here so this wall really provided the perfect backdrop for an outdoor kitchen and we've gone for real kind of rustic ironmongery and grain board i think it's kind of like an oak board but it's going to be super super lovely then this is our outdoor pizza oven and what we're doing with the big green egg is it's actually going to be fitted into somewhere that's going to have some shelves as well so that's going to be really really lovely and then you can see here just the sort of tap now i'm actually going to just let them know that i want this to be more of a butler style belfast sink rather than it built in like that so these cabinets will be slightly smaller um, because the sink will sit on the outside if that makes sense but the sink i'm going to try and i'm going to go outside and show you the view so you kind of have to imagine that the uh, digger is currently in, it's slightly in the way um my sink is going to sit about here so the view from the sink is going to be the woodland that dove was a that that pigeon was a paid actress by the way <laughs> but yeah so that's going to be the backdrop imagine when all of the cow parsley is up it is just going to be like literally an outdoor kitchen i am so excited and just to show you a few inspiration images so this is the kind of sink i think i want it maybe a bit deeper than that but this is the kind of sink obviously not that tap that i'm thinking so these are the kind of cabinets that we'll have with a very similar worktop to this 
beautiful sink. The, the, the tap will actually come out of the sink, obviously, but little cabinet door like that. These are just sort of the inspiration that I captured for the space, which, yes, very, very excited. One of the other things that I want to talk you through is my plans for Ali's dressing room and how we're going to re it without doing too much to the actual cabinetry because the cabinetry sadly is just falling apart. It's like my um, cabinetry in my office. And so what we're gonna do is have Andy come in and kind of fix things and just put things back the way that they should be and then give it a good paint, probably change the floor in my dressing room and Ali's dressing room. Um, so I'll show you the colours that we're thinking of and I bought a few bits for Ali just to give him a bit of a feel because you'll see that most of his furniture is now gone, it's a very empty space and these are the colours that we were thinking of. Now he's just, he's just requested a few more colours, my favourite is the bottom one but I appreciate that's going to be very very dark in here because it'll be the ceiling as well. Um, this is the one that's in his office currently. It looks a lot more gray in this room, but I actually think it might work in here. I just like the, how, more, how much more greeny. It's not picking it up in here, but it's a lot more greeny. Um, however, we've just requested some paint samples from Morris and Co um, for doing this space. So we're gonna see how it comes, but this area is gonna change. We're gonna move Ali's randomly paced, placed um, radiator it's going to be moved over to here where there will be probably some old disheveled leather armchairs or sofas what have you and this is actually going to become an open almost edit of clothing so he'll have a rail and some shelves and maybe some some of his favorite shoes and just create a more usable space that is a bit softer as well everything will be painted the same color um, much like my dressing room, but not the same color as my dressing room. So cabinetry, this has offended me, this particular skirting with the, that's offended me since he painted it. I said, Ali, you need to paint your skirtings. He was like, no. <laughs> I literally, I'm like, no, the skirtings need to be painted. It just looks so bizarre with the square little bit in there. But anyway, everything's gonna be one color. We're thinking an old kind of, um, I think they call it an architect's, drawers not an architect's desk so it's a lot a lot of thin drawers where Ali can maybe store ties hankies watches accessories and it will be like an island and what we hope to do is to have Andy fix some casters to it so he can move it out of the way into the side for when he wants to film as well but it'll be an antique and as much as possible we're using antiques obviously so that we're not buying anything new and um, that will sit in the in the center here There'll be a lot of old trunks, which I'm going to unbox with you. I've bought a couple just to give Ali a bit of a feel for the tones. It's gonna to be very rich, very um, very old time masculine, which obviously is just something that both Ali and I love, but making it feel much more modern and old furniture, because again, it's kind of like fashion. If you stick to the things that just never go out of style, you can't go wrong. So anyway, that is the kind of plan. So I'm gonna get this box open. It's some antiques that I bought online. And um, to be honest, I bought lots of antique books and a lot of them were smaller than I imagined. <laughs> it's the hardest thing about shopping online. It's like, mm. <laughs> So this is a very big package from a company that I found on Etsy, but I thought I've like had their store saved in like my favorites on Etsy for ages because if you want the charm of lots of lovely trunks. You know, I've got a little bit of a like soft spot for old trunks and I love Louis Vuitton, like antique Louis Vuitton trunks. But if you don't have the price, like the budget for a Louis Vuitton, this Etsy store, they're still a little bit expensive. You're probably thinking, looking at more around the, the 1000, well, they have some, these ones I think cost me about, cause it's a set. I think this cost me, I'll have to double check. Um, but this was under a thousand and then I ordered a few other bits but if you want to introduce some old trunks they have a really lovely selection that are not £20,000 like an antique LV so anyway let's get into it well packaged considering like, it must be a hard thing for them to just be able to send but Honestly, the joy. Oh, this is so beautiful. Oh, 
Honestly, there is always a nook and cranny in our house that I'm like, I'd love a trunk there. <laughs> always. And the richness of this colour is just wonderful. Look at this detail on the front. I'm imagining it's so heavy. Ow, that's on my bloody toe. Oh, should have waited for Ali to do this really. I didn't... I don't know why, it didn't look quite so big when it was in the wrapping. <laughs> look at this piece. Now it is, oh, that's the colour. Look at how beautiful that colour is. We've got the brass clasps, beautiful leather detailing, leather handles, and the most exciting thing is, I'm pretty sure there is more inside. So let's get into it. <laughs> Oh, oh wow, Drew and Sons Piccadilly Circus. Oh, I've not even seen the inside of this. Oh, and there is another one. Un altro. So this is the kind of thing in Ali's dressing room that can be used either as a display case or um, as something for like a coffee table or a side table, something like that. But now we're going to open the other one. Oh, mon dieu. Trunk number two. So this one is slightly smaller, but the perfect proportions. Again, with EJM, which I actually really like because ignore the J. Although the J could be significant, but Edwin Millen and Son was like my family business hundreds of, like hundreds of years ago, well, a hundred years ago. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, that's why I liked that. But it's got all of the detailing. Sorry, I'm out of breath because it is a mission to uh, get these open on your own. However, I'm going to tell you again there's something inside that one as well <laughs> so i'm going to undo these clasps because these are slightly different whereas they don't have the uh, brass clasps these have buckles instead yeah, voila again drew and son piccadilly circus looking beautiful and then we have now this is not a trunk, <laughs> this is something different. But I really like how this looks with the um, top of the second trunk open. Imagine this with a nice pair of shoes displayed, uh, maybe some old antique clothing, you know, like a, a valet's box or something like that displayed in here. It would just be so, so lovely. But the final piece, now, I haven't decided. This might be too short for the hallway. I haven't decided yet. Um, it may go in Ali's office. But I could not resist this piece. Look at the detail of this. So I bought this as more of like an umbrella stand, but this could go as like a walking stick stand in Ali's office. Um, but yes, I got these all off of Etsy. And these are the best kinds of things to add into your, your home to add character because the warmth of the leather, you have to be very careful, get that really rich toned leather and um, the brass details, if you're looking to introduce a little bit more of this, I would say start with these little accessories. Wall colours go for sort of more heritage muddy tones and then complement it with these. As many natural materials as possible and as many antiques as possible. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is six of my husband's freshly made chocolate chip cookies ready for a cup of tea this morning before heading out. I have taken out the first of my wool shirt dresses. So this is a 100% wool shirt dress from House of Brewer. It's in a really lovely kind of moss greeny tweed um, fabric and I absolutely love it. And this is my hack for still enjoying the sort of wonderfulness and put togetherness but comfortableness of a shirt dress in autumn winter is get yourself a 100% wool one. Now the bizarre thing about House of Brewer is um, a lot of their things don't come in even a size 8 let alone a size 6 so I actually got this in a size 10 true to my shoulder size it fits nicely on there and with a shirt dress generally you kind of cinch it in at the waist anyway either with the 
the tie itself, which I've not actually done in a bow yet, because I'm gonna try it with a belt. So it doesn't really matter, and I actually think I'm probably gonna order this in some other colors, because I love a shirt dress, and this is a very English country grandmother style shirt dress, but I have had the most exciting morning. Of course, it is Sunday now, and, um, I did something that I have been meaning to do. I said to Ali last night, I was like, I've started making my um, Christmas list and I've actually, I've never done a Christmas list before because usually it, it's kind of just like, oh, I usually just buy what I want, but I've not done that this year. And one of the things that was on my Christmas list, I have actually gone and booked for myself, Ali, and two of our friends. They're like a couple and we, have booked which I am so excited about because I honestly I thought it was sold out when um, I tried to book it last night well I had a look last night but I've seen lots of influencers going to the um, going on the Belmond British Pullman and <laughs> I was thinking about just booking it for like now but then I saw that they did actual like Christmas trips and, and they were all sold out. I don't know what happened, but they were all sold out. So they do a Christmas in Canterbury, then um, they do a trip to like a, a, a trip to Le Manoir. But Ali and I have been to Le Manoir, so um, we, we wouldn't have done that anyway. And it's one of the most expensive ones. Um, and they also do a Christmas in Bath. Um, I would have done the Christmas in Bath, to be honest, over Canterbury, but actually I'm kind of happy that... Anyway, I'm ruining the story here. I looked last night, they were all sold out, so we were just going to book like a, a Christmas afternoon tea or something on the on the Belmont Pullman. And then I actually put the details in properly this morning and saw that there was four seats left on the on one of the Canterbury Christmas at Canterbury days. And then I tried to book it and it wouldn't let me book it. And it said that the website was down and I was like, oh my gosh, I tried to call them and couldn't get through because obviously it's a Sunday. So I messaged them on Instagram, obviously no one's working, but then I managed to go back and I've booked it because I've seen so many people going to going on the trip. Um, I think a lot of creators were invited to like um, review it and it's worked hook, line and sinker. But I did actually, I think the one that cinched the deal was I actually saw someone um, and they were like, is it worth it? Because I don't know, moral compasses are different with everyone and I think that's probably something that um, it's probably one of the things that makes it so difficult in sort of trusting creators and things like that I know a lot of people struggle with that and it's difficult to find like a moral compass that you align with and so anyway this lady just was like I booked it because I'd seen lots of people doing it and I wanted to know if it was amazing or not and it was everything that I dreamed it would be so that was why we booked it then I fell down an absolute rabbit hole um, of discovering the Orient Express which I actually think that that would be like a dream come true to do like the Orient Express to Venice or something like that. But then I discovered the um, the Scottish one. What is it? Is it the Scottish Pullman? I'm not sure. Um, and they do like a whiskey tour. It's very expensive, but I'm sure you know that that's the kind of thing that I really, really would enjoy. And actually, I think that Carrie suggested we do it for New Year, but New Year's sold out. But yeah, anyway, we've got it booked and I'm so excited for this. You have no idea. Um, I, I, I've actually, I was shaking when I was booking it because I was so excited. Um, so it was one of the things that I put on my Christmas list, but I've now taken that off um, because I've booked it anyway. <laughs> this is the issue. Okay, that's the issue. Um, but anyway, today we're up. Ali's baked some cookies. I'm gonna have a cup of tea and have two of the cookies now. And uh, then what we wanted to try and do was there's a pub that used to be open in, near Bicester in Oxfordshire and it's called the Muddy Duck and it has rave reviews and it actually closed from due, like due to COVID obviously, lots of places did. But they, I didn't know whether they were gonna open again and Carrie's always said that we should go there. We tried to book lots of times, never, never managed to book. Um, and it's now reopened. We're not actually going to the restaurant, which is something that we definitely want to do. We wanted to try and go to the pub. It's walk-ins only, so we are really chancing it, especially on a Sunday, but we're just gonna try it. If not, we can go somewhere else. It really is no kind of issue. So um, yes, I'm gonna have my cookies, and then hopefully we'll head out on a lovely day. This is the outfit of the day. I've got my wool dress on, which you can kind of see the color a little bit better. Um, Ralph Lauren jumper over the shoulders, Ralph Lauren flats, and 
um, my Birkin 30. One of the other things I haven't shown you is, you're probably not even gonna be able to see it, is these newly done windows. So you would have seen that I bought a roll of like frosted window paper. Uh, it's like a sticker and you stick it onto the window. I bought it from Amazon, it was like 10 quid because we used to have these like card sheets that used to flap in the wind and Ali fitted these for me. I've only got it on one side because I like the sky behind me on the other side, but this just helps with filming videos because it makes harsh sunlight a lot softer. So it's a lot easier to film in this area. You get no kind of like lines of light or anything that it just diffuses it really beautifully. Kind of like a natural beauty box <laughs> basically. But um, yeah, so that's been done in here, which has made such a difference. But what I want to get for the eaves is some beautiful like aged brass rods bottom and top with some fabric either side just to soften in here even more but I have to decide on the fabric perhaps I'll go for the cobnut because I think the cobnut goes in here really nicely um, but I don't know if time will do those but yeah fragrance today is Penhaligon's Lady Blanche Oh my goodness. So we've come to the pub, which is called The Lodge, and we didn't go for the fine dining, but we are gonna book in for it. But I, I, I can't believe, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a look around, but these are the toilets. Like, look at this. It is literally like being in a spaceship. I feel like I'm in a different world. <laughs> and this screen is basically showing you all of the... <laughs> The controls. So we've just finished up at the Muddy Duck and we thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that. I think I was a bit of a fail in vlogging on the sort of way up to that because I didn't think we were gonna get a table because it's quite a well-known place. It's just reopened and I just didn't think it was gonna happen. And we walked in and straight away, um, we were just waiting for one couple to leave and then we sat down. So we got to explore a little bit, um, but we have been driving the new Range Rover a bit and one of the things well we're starting to notice some things about it had passengers in the back and they've cranked up the air conditioning and the vents massively so all I could hear in the back was them blowing a gale and I just tap a few buttons on the screen here because there's controls in the back I thought it would kind of override that but the front actually overrides it so I can just turn things down and it's not blowing a gale the other thing that's very, very good that we've noticed is that, that it has cruise control, but what it does, the cruise control monitors the car in front, which I, our car, def our old car, definitely doesn't do, which After is always- three quarters of a mile, take the second exit at the roundabout. Which our car definitely doesn't do, and it was one of the things with cruise control that I always found a bit of a faff, that if someone maybe doesn't have cruise control in front of you and they're on their brakes all the time, and it can be quite frustrating. So the cruise control on the new Range Rover actually monitors the car in front of you, so you could feel the car braking when the car was braking in front. It definitely felt a lot more sort of hands-off driving, which is what you want from cruise control. So that is a big, big tick, which isn't new technology, but it's nice to have it in the car, personally. Yeah. It's not new. I've definitely been in cars with it, but, oh, new Aston. Yes, yeah. Lovely. Didn't like the color though. Baby blue. Little bit baby blue. Little bit pearlescent. Sounds nice. nice. <laughs> <laughs> we are now back home and I'm gonna show the dogs how to get on the sofa. Come on boys! Come on, you coming up? Up we go! Up we go! Good boy! Well done! Well done! I don't have poo ears anymore, mummy. I don't. <sighs> if you don't know, you might have seen it on Ali's vlog but um, caught the boys rolling in something in the garden. 
and uh, I never usually check but I went out and checked and Barclay was covered in what I believe to be fox poo and we don't really have it this will be like the first time they've ever done this because we don't really have foxes around here and um, I thought it was just you know over his fur and then when I was cleaning him there was a lump of poo in his ear like I have never seen in my life and I just got myself dressed for lunch as well which was lovely. It was horrific, absolutely horrific. I've never actually had to clean fox poo off of a dog before and it was a first. But they're nice and squeaky clean, although Barkley absolutely hates baths. Are you okay, you two? Good boys, good boys. We are currently watching It's Complicated and I've wanted to watch this for a while and oh my goodness, her kitchen garden! Can you see where she's got her uh, rhubarb? She's got lupins. Has she? Have a look in a second. And I love that her tomato trellis is... See? There. Where? In the background. Oh yeah! I love the flowers growing over... Imagine those fences with flowers growing over them. Over the um, light well. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful kitchen garden. This is such a dreamy film. This is what most of our evenings look like at the moment, since Barclay's been able to get up onto the sofa. He likes to snuggle with Porty too. They both come up, although Barclay enjoys most of the time being on his back. We're going to need to get a bigger sofa. There's not enough room for me on here, babe. Mm -hmm. Please excuse my legs fully on show, but I am currently the bed. Both of them are draped all over me and I can't move. And it is definitely time to bed. Time to bed or time for bed? It is definitely time for when bed. You don't even know. Exactly, when you can't get it right. Come on, sausages. Come on. Time to go to bed. Sorry. Oh, toe beans. <laughs> he is such a baby, he doesn't know what day it is. Little baby being carried. Look, Porter wakes up because he gets jealous. Come on then. Don't you roll over because you know it's wee wee time. <laughs> Come on. You know the drill now. I beg your pardon. That was a very big snort. Come on. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> I'm going to flash my bottom. 